In this lesson, we're gonna shake it up a bit. Whoa! We're gonna review the acquisition transaction in a business combination and the consolidating entry immediately after when we purchase less than 100% of the sub. That's gonna give us a non-controlling interest. We'll break down the acquisition entry once again into three basic items. First, the sub's book value, second, the sub's fair value, and third, the purchase price paid. If you consistently start your business combination acquisitions with these three items every time, the rest of the calculations are easy. Then to consolidate the acquisition, we go to our acquisition three step. Step one, out with sub's equity. Step two, mark to market and access to goodwill. And step three, get rid of the investment and establish the non-controlling interest. All right, too much talking, not enough doing. Let's go to the board. First, start with the question. Then, as you read through the prompt, you can keep what you need and throw out what you don't. The question reads, provide the consolidation entry immediately following this acquisition. So we know there's going to be a business combination. Remember, business combination just means transaction where parent acquires control. Once parent has the control, then we consolidate. Make a note on the top of your board. Now let's go to the rest of the prompt. On December 31st, year one, Pin acquired 80% of the outstanding common stock of Stripe by issuing 200,000 shares of common stock with a par value of a dollar and a trading price of $18. On this date, the fair value of Stripe's equipment was $100,000 more than the carrying amount. The equity sections of both companies' balance sheets immediately before the acquisition are as follows. Then they give us the numbers for the equity sections. That was a lot. Just remember, don't be intimidated by the size of the prompt. Just break it down sentence by sentence. On December 31st, year one, PIN acquired 80% of the outstanding common stock of Stripe. Start with a picture. Write P, S, and 80%. Now we can see who's who. Let's start the acquisition by setting up for our calculations. First, book value at the bottom, then fair value in the middle, and purchase price at the top. And note the percentage, 80%. Let's start from the bottom. How much is book value of Stripe? Here, they don't just give us book value. We learned in our earlier lessons that book value just means assets minus liabilities, which also equals net assets, and it also equals equity. They all equal the same thing, book value. Do they give us any of these? They give us Stripe's total equity, 2.5 mil. That's book value. Next, let's do Stripe's fair value. Once again, they don't just give it to us. We have to work for it. The prompt says that on the acquisition date, the fair value of Stripe's equipment was 100,000 more than the carrying amount. Without any other information, we assume that this is the only difference between book value and fair value. So we add this $100,000 increase to Stripe's book value of 2.5 mil for a fair value of 2.6 mil. Third, the purchase price paid. PIN paid using 200,000 shares at $18 per share. Why do we use the $18 fair value rather than the $1 par? Theoretically, if PIN wanted, it could have gone to the stock market and sold its shares for $18 each and then paid for Stripe with that cash. Par value doesn't really mean anything. It's a made up accounting and legal term. It has nothing to do with real life value. So let's calculate. 200,000 shares times $18 per share equals 3.6 mil. Now we have all our numbers. Do you see anything weird about our numbers? Well, the purchase price is for 80%, but the book and fair values of Stripe are at 100%. In problems where the parent acquires less than 100%, we calculate our numbers at 100%. The book value is at 100%, the fair value is at 100%, and to figure out goodwill or a bargain purchase gain, we need the purchase price at 100%. Here, we only have the 80% number for the purchase price, so there are a few ways to get this up to 100%. Well, what does the 20% difference represent? Non-controlling interest. We acquired 80%, but the remaining 20 owned by the other shareholders is called non-controlling interest. Sometimes the prompt will give you the non-controlling interest amount. In that case, we can just add the non-controlling interest to the 80% purchase price. But here they don't give it to us. So to figure out the 100%, what do we do? We use what we have. And what we have is the 80% purchase price 3.6. We take this 3.6 and divide by 80%, which gives us the 100% purchase price number, 4.5 mil, which means the non-controlling interest is the difference between the 100% purchase price and the 80% purchase price. 4.5 mil less 3.6 mil equals 900,000. Back to our calculations. Note the difference between the book value and the fair value as mark to market. 
This is the amount that we have to record to get Stripe's assets and liabilities to fair value. Remember, PIN just acquired control over Stripe the company. Theoretically, that includes all of Stripe's assets and liabilities. And PIN buys in at fair value. PIN doesn't care about Stripe's historical cost from 100 years ago. So 2.6 million fair value less 2.5 mil book value equals 100,000. We have to mark up the equipment to fair value by 100,000. Next, note the difference between fair value and the purchase price. Here, the purchase price is higher than fair value, so we have goodwill. We define goodwill as the excess of the 100% purchase price over the 100% fair value. The 100% purchase price is 4.5 mil less the 100% fair value of 2.6 mil equals 1.9 mil to goodwill. Looking at our numbers, PIN acquired 80% of Stripe, but all of the calculations are based on 100%. That's weird. Let's look at an excerpt from Verizon's balance sheet. We see the non-controlling interest in equity, and that's because on the balance sheet, Verizon includes the acquisition date fair value of all its subs, assets, and liabilities at 100%. And then it shows the portion that is attributed to the non-controlling interest in equity. In essence, it's saying parent doesn't completely own certain of these assets and liabilities. Some of them are owned by the non-controlling interest. So we include Stripe's numbers at 100%, and later in step three of the consolidation entry, we establish the non-controlling interest for its percentage in equity. Let's do the acquisition entries first before going to the consolidation entry. Starting with PIN's entry at acquisition, PIN acquired ownership interest in Stripe by paying 200,000 shares worth 3.6 million. PIN's issuing common stock, which is an equity, and it's increasing. That's a credit. How much is it for? Remember, common stock only includes PAR. This is one of the few times we actually care about PAR. PIN issued 200,000 shares times $1 PAR equals 200,000. Where does the rest of the 3.6 mil go? Additional paid in capital. APIC is an equity and it's increasing. That's a credit. The amount is the fair value of 3.6 million less the 200,000 we already recorded under common stock. That equals 3.4 million. What's the other side of the entry? Investment in Stripe. Investment is an asset and it's increasing, then it's a debit, 3.6 million. Now, what does Seed record? Did Seed give or get anything in this transaction? The prompt says that PIN purchased the outstanding stock of Stripe. It does not say that Stripe issued stock. PIN bought Stripe stock from Stripe's owners, its shareholders. It was a transaction between PIN and Stripe's shareholders. It has nothing to do with Stripe. That means that Stripe records nothing. Now, what's the consolidating journal entry right after acquisition? For that, we go to our acquisition three-step. First, out with Subs Equity. Stripe's equity consists of common stock, 1.5 million, APIC, 150,000, retained earnings, 850,000. Let's put an S after each of these accounts just to make it clear that they're Stripes. Equity has a normal balance of credit, so to get rid of it, we have to debit. Step two, mark to market and access to goodwill. What adjustments are needed to mark to market? Stripe's equipment is 100,000 more than carrying value. Equipment is an asset and it's increasing, that's a debit. Then excess to goodwill, that's the 1.9 million. Goodwill is an asset and it's increasing, that's a debit. Now what's the other side of the entry? Let's go to step three, get rid of the investment and establish the non-controlling interest. The investment in Stripe is 3.6 million. It's an asset. Assets have a normal balance of debit. So to get rid of it, we have to credit. And remember, we have to get rid of the investment account to avoid double counting. Let's finish by establishing the non-controlling interest. Remember, when there's no consolidation and parent is by itself, there is no non-controlling interest. The non-controlling interest represents those other shareholders of the subsidiary. We don't care about them until we consolidate and add subs accounts into parents accounts. Only then does it become important that we own a majority interest, because that's the reason why we consolidate. We said the non-controlling interest at the acquisition date was 900,000. We're establishing the non-controlling interest. Non-controlling interest is an equity account. Equity increasing, that's a credit. Do our debits equal our credits? Yup, done. Let's take a look at what we're left with after the consolidating journal entry. Step one, out with subs equity. Stripe's equity is now zero. That means that on the consolidated financial statements, only PIN's equity remains, and that's what we want. Step two, mark to market and access to goodwill. We adjusted all of Stripe's assets and liabilities to fair value. 
So on PIN's consolidated financials, all of Stripe's assets and liabilities are shown at their fair value, including goodwill. Step three, get rid of the investment and establish non-controlling interest. We got rid of the investment account. It's now at zero to avoid double counting. And we have a new equity account, non-controlling interest. Did your head explode trying to get through that problem? That was a big problem. But that covered the bulk of the acquisition and consolidation entries. Do me a favor, in the next few days, print out a clean copy of the problem and try to work out the solution without looking. All right, we're plugging along. In the next few lessons, we're going to review some of the details needed to complete the picture for the acquisition transactions in business combinations. We got that and a lot more headed your way. You want to be sure to hit these points on the exam. Stay with me. I'm Liz Cho with Test Prep in a Snap.